We're going to let it shine in the church. Shine in our homes. Shine in our communities. Shine in our jobs. Shine in our nation. And shine in this world. For you said that a city that is set on a hill could not be here. So we're going to let our light shine before me. But we don't want any of the glory, Lord God. Because you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. So this day, Lord God, we just ask that your spirit would have dominion. Let our perfect will be done. Lord God, we just ask that you would just build a hedge about us. To protect us from the wiles of the devil. Lord, we just pray that thou would look upon our pastor and first lady. Look upon the officers, members, and friends of this branch. Look upon our visitors today. Lord, we just hope and pray that something would be said or done. In the singing, in the preaching, or even just in a hearty handshake and an exchange with grief. But like that, your true love, the love of Christ, shine abundantly. That those who are outside the ark of safety might make a decision to give you that heart. Lord, we pray now that God will strengthen and meet us out. That I will be able to say what you have given me and no more. Lord, we just ask our blessings upon this day. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We have an honor to God who has been in my life. We have Pastor Porter in his absence. To the Bowling. To the wife. To the deacons, mothers, and the deaconess. To this wonderful congregation. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Amen. It has been a, a whirlwind tour in these last two weeks. We went on a vacation in Los Angeles and had a wonderful time out there with my wife's grandfather, and great aunts and great uncles. We met a lot of them. that side of the family that I hadn't met before. And sure, they wanted to see us, but they more wanted to see the children than they wanted to see them. I can admit that. Well, he just said, take them and go over there and play with them. We just sit down for a little while. While I was out there in uh, Los Angeles, I got some tragic news that one of my closest friends in North Carolina had passed away. I had been on the phone with his wife, had him travel with her several nights, and he made it through the surgery quite well, the complications about a week or so later, he passed away, so I made preparations to get out of town almost as soon as I got back. So this time last week, I was actually at the, at the funeral. You know, you can see people that uh, you've known and they pass away, but when you have walked right beside somebody for years, Right. But you've seen them when they were healthy, you've seen them when they first got sick, and knowing how he had suffered for 13 years, the lupus. They've been hospitalized almost 40 sometimes, they've been on the respirator over the years, nine or ten different times, kidney transplant, hip replacement, cataract surgery. He said that over that 13 year period, he had not had a single day where there wasn't some type of pain in his body. We worked in a lab together on our master's degree under the same professor, and so I saw him every day. We remained close. <coughs> and he sent me a message over the computer about a week before the surgery. And he said that he had his business straight. All right. All right. Well, he said that God had always directed him from the time he was six years old. Amen. And he said, whisper a prayer for me, but keep looking out for the Son, our Savior. My Lord, all right. For he will always guide us. 
And so I'm confident tonight that he knew the Lord in the part of his soul. But even with that, there's a sorrow in not being able to see a friend while we're down here. And I tell you that his son, who is my godson, standing there beside that grave on that hillside and that old country part of North Carolina was going crying on my shoulders. <laughs> it was one of the hardest things that I have ever been through in all of my days. Oh. And I tell you, a part of me, I guess, will never leave that particular day behind me. And somewhere between the East Coast and the West Coast, I picked up a cold. So I've been coughing like crazy for about a week and a half. So I need your prayers. Okay. All right. Uh, whether you've been prayed a hundred times in the last hour or once in the last two years, I need my prayer today. Hey, right now, God. Amen. 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 I was coughing so much, I so much, I had to bring in some of my herbal tea. <laughs> it's been interesting. So a good night's sleep will do just fine. So I won't be before you long. You might have heard me say that before and say, oh, he won't talk too hard. Not today. I can promise you that. Amen. But it's good to, to get back. We're living out of a suitcase. Being able to get home, stretch out. So hopefully in a week or so we'll be back up to speed. I hear you now. But the Lord is able to give us strength. Oh, yeah. Even though our physical body may not feel 100%. And there is what? a word from the Lord. Yes, sir. That word comes from the book of Hebrews. Yes, sir. The 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing, yes, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Yes, sir. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, <coughs> looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, yes, sir. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, sir. I'd like to take as a subject today the weight of racism and sin. The weight of racism and sin. When we look at the natural man, and we look at the spiritual man, they respond to two different things. The natural man responds to the things that are of this earth. The spirit man responds to the things that are of God. But if you have not learned how to master walking naturally, you will find it very difficult to maneuver in this world. I know. I hear ya. Go to the grocery store and fill up a basket. And when the cashier rings up the bill, tell them the Lord will pay them. <laughs> and you will see the difference between the spiritual man and the natural man. I hear ya, Doctor. The spirit man is at liberty to make that statement. But the natural man will get you locked up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's right. 
<laughs> this does not negate the power that the spirit man receives from God. I hear you, doctor. All right. But God gives us a way to translate that into our everyday experience so we are empowered to make the right decisions so that that individual would have a job and would be drawing a salary and would have money when they go to the store. And they pay by a number of ways, but they would be able to pay and God still provided for them. So what we're talking about is common sense <laughs> along with our spirituality. There are a lot of people that are so holy. I hear you, doctor. But too holy to work. <laughs> I hear you, doctor. And something is wrong. For the writer of Hebrews, when he speaks about a cloud of witnesses, he references all of the old saints who by faith in the word of God were able to conquer and rise up against innumerable odds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Compassed about by a cloud of witnesses is not just one or two people. I hear you, doctor. I hear you. But there are too many to number. Looking in the 11th chapter, it says that we could not record all of the instances where faith in the word of God propelled people to go through all manner of evil, but yet gain the victory in the end. Yet many of them died, yes, sir. having never received the promise. I hear you. Yes, sir. But they passed it on to the next generation. Yes, sir. Yes, Each sir. one standing on the shoulders of the other. If we look at this race of individuals we call the African American, we too have a cloud of witnesses. Uh -huh who have borne their burden in the heat of the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And without an understanding of where you have come from, you will never have a clear picture of where you're going. Uh -huh. I hear you, Doc. You are doomed to make the same mistakes and travel around in the same circle. Yes, sir. Like the children of Israel, who were taken out of Egypt, Hello. who wandered around in circles in the wilderness yes, for 40 years. Oh, yeah. And of those that left, only two made it in the Canaan. Uh -huh. Joshua and Caleb. The rest perished in the wilderness. Yes, sir. So if we take a moment to understand where we are located, I know. And how we got into this predicament, perhaps we can understand some of the things that have influenced the natural man yes, Lord. to behave in the way that we oftentimes do. Oh, yes. 50% or more of marriages end in divorce. Crime is rampant in our neighborhood. Yes, sir. More black men in prison than in college. Family structure has declined. We used to say extended family. But now that is the same as just a immediate family. That has been a change. I have spoken at schools up and down the East Coast and a few since I've been in the Twin Cities. I have yet to speak to a class of young people and find the majority of them with a positive image of themselves Hello. to this very day. I'm not speaking about three and four hundred years ago. I'm speaking about right now. Uh -huh. Hello. Self-esteem and self-image are a foundation upon which God will work upon. 
For if you do not believe that you are worthy to be blessed, My Lord. you will not be able to appropriate the faith to expect the blessing. You will be willing to accept anything that comes along and simply say it is the will of God. Totally denying the fact that He came to bring us life and that more abundant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know about you, but if I don't have two nickels to rub together and my back pockets are meeting at the scene. <laughs> that doesn't seem like abundance to me. <laughs> I hear you, doctor. <laughs> so it means I need to position myself in such a way that God can bless me. Yeah. Maybe I'm not in my place, yeah. and I have not learned the lessons well enough from the past. Right. Okay. But the children don't have the capacity at their young age to understand what we call the weight of racism. My Lord, my Lord. What is the relationship between the weight of racism and sin? My Lord. If I become hopeless in my outlook on life, uh -huh. I'm more subject to want to steal from you. I'm more subject to kill you, my Lord. to disrespect my parents and authority figures. Home, school, church, community, <clears throat> nation. If I'm put into that situation. But to the individual who has a higher calling. Who realizes that they have come from a long line of people that God has blessed. Oh yeah. Then they follow a pattern. Where one generation stands upon the shoulders of the next. I know. I know. Take for instance the Jew. You will not be able to ask a Jewish child from the youngest age what is the meaning and significance of the Holocaust. I know. Without them being able to give you a detailed answer that would make you sit down and wonder how could a young person understand these manner of things. My Lord, my Lord, I hear you. But the Jew understands that if their people understand the trials and tribulations of yesteryear, they will remain focused and not take life for granted as we move into the 21st century. My Lord, my Lord, I hear you. So we see that our young people, they are being taught a watered down history. My Lord. They are being taught just the tip of the iceberg. Hello. Without a knowledge of your history, you're doomed to make the same mistakes. And when the writer of Hebrews spoke about this great cloud of witnesses, we need to understand today, before you get into all of your hallelujahs, <laughs> and praise the Lord, how did we get where we are? I know. I know. How did the situation begin? And then we'll know what to ask God for. I know. Our history did not start with slavery. All right. All right. And despite what some of the well-educated and affluent of this world might think, your ancestors are not from Woodbury. <laughs> they're not from Eden, they're not from Plymouth, they're not from St. Paul, they're not from Minneapolis. Father might have been born here. Maybe grandfather. But keep on trailing back. And you will find that you will have to leave the continental United States. And you will have to leave this hemisphere. Whether you want to admit it or not, you come from people who are not from here. <laughs> That's the reality of it. So our heritage was something that I never heard about when I was coming up. I went to church every Sunday, and I believed everything that I was told. And I have benefited greatly from the lessons 
that I was told. Hello? But I never saw the dentist who looked like me. <laughs> Come on, never dog. saw the doctor who looked like me. I tell you, doctor. The mayor didn't look like me. Uh -huh. The city council didn't look like me. I hear you, the doctor. The superintendent of the school and the principal didn't look like me. I hear you, doctor. I thought it must have been some unwritten law that nobody could occupy these fields of endeavor and look like me. I hear you. I hear you. You can only base your understanding on what you have experienced or have been taught since you were born. And I didn't know any different. So, if we look at what is called the cradle of civilization, you got to deal with Africa. And I tell you that we are not just divided in the United States, but we are divided in a pan-Africa way. I know. Because there is not a strong tie anymore between where we have come from and where we presently are located. I know. I know. I'm going to preach today. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a history lesson. I hear you, doctor. But this is just background. <laughs> I never took chemistry in high school. I know. But yet I learned in college that chemistry had its start in ancient Egypt. I know. I know. I was also shown a World Book Encyclopedia of 1965. And it stated that Egypt was a country located in the Middle East. Didn't even want to attach it to Africa because there was too much richness in the culture. So there will be something too positive for us to look at. So we get into the area of who controls the information that you receive. When we see Pastor Paul speaking about wanting to start a school, you wonder why? Because the information that your children are being fed will ultimately affect that self-image or self-esteem. And if it is not strong and powerful and intact, all of the training and all of the teaching in the world, it will be like pouring water into a bucket that has a hole in it. It will never be filled, no matter how hard you want to try. That framework upon which God works on, that substance, is how we believe that God has destined us for greatness. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Not just whites, not just blacks, but all of God's children oh, yeah. have been destined for greatness. Uh -huh. We are the sons and daughters of God. Yeah. And we should be behaving like the kings and queens I hear you. I hear you. that God has called us to be. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But I learned that science had its origins in ancient Egypt. Mathematics algebra and geometry. And when I learned that up until about 10 years ago, doctors took a vow called the Hippocratic Oath, which was to the great king and first physician in recorded history, Amphotep, an African. Now, if it feels strange for me to want to be a medical doctor, if somebody that looked like me was the first doctor, what happened along the way between right, here right. and there? Sometimes we have reflection on heritage. 
But we really need to understand that those tidbits of information can be the difference between your child reaching the highest height or settling for just average or mediocre. I know, I know. The strong village concept of each one helping the other is an African concept. It takes an entire village to raise a child. It's not a simple cliche that somebody just thought of, but it's recorded in history. So we have a great cloud of witnesses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And by faith, they endured the most brutal and dehumanizing act ever perpetrated in the history of mankind. Uh -huh. you die. But we don't hear about it. It's not to make one angry, but it is to make one knowledgeable. Uh -huh. It is to make one have a sense of focus and a sense of purpose. Uh -huh. When the immigrant comes from an Asian country to the U.S., who have just come out of poverty, they tend to stay in small apartments and huddle together. Hello, hello. They keep their money in shoeboxes uh -huh. and save until they have enough to open up a restaurant or small store. Right. The direct descendants of these individuals who started this first entrepreneurial pursuit will graduate the tops out of the law school and medical school across this nation. And it is because they have a shared knowledge of the struggle and the sense of urgency. I know, I know. Many of them are not even Christian nations. When you focus your mind and believe that it is meant for you to have something, I know. you will get it. Right. God can hold it back from you. And because we are Christian and believe in God and we don't expect these kind of blessings, we're not going to get it. And just because we're Christian, does not mean that we're going to be blessed over in abundance. But it's according to your faith. So I believe that if our children today had an understanding of what our forefathers have been through, yes, maybe we wouldn't see so many pair of pants hanging off somebody's behind. <laughs> So we hear this term, the Black Holocaust. My Lord. The total number of slaves imported is unknown. It is estimated that 900,000 came in the 16th century, 2.75 million in the 17th century, 7 million in the 18th century, and perhaps 15 million total. Probably for every one slave that made it to this country, five died in root. My Lord, my Lord. Now if you look at it, that gives you at least 60,000, 60 million, excuse me, who didn't make it. My Lord, my Lord. Now those are some numbers for you to reflect on. So young people, when you wonder whether you're going to skip school today, think about that ride. Think about that. Think about that. Think about how those people died that you might have this opportunity. Yes, the next time you wonder whether you're going to do your homework or go to the mall, think about the 60 million. I know, I know. Think about the sharks that changed their roots because they followed behind the ships because I know. they knew they would get a meal. Some would say this is far too harsh to speak about. I know. But how harsh is the world? slams the doors of a jail cell on our children. Amen. How hard is the world when a drive by shooting cuts down one of our mothers? Amen. How hard is the world when AIDS are spreading rampant through our community? Come on. That seems pretty harsh to me. But somehow we need to be shot into a sense of existence. So this lingering effect of slavery is still a weight. I know. Oh, yeah. So the ill relationship between 
racism, and sin. Yes, and we have to understand that now that the physical bonds have been removed, the mental bonds are still in place. Yeah. There's a story out of India of a great elephant who, unlike the others, refused to be broken. My Lord. Snapping chains and ropes could not be restrained in any manner. But after many years of fighting, the elephant one day finally gave up. My Lord. His captors unhooked the chain from the tree, but allowed the remainder of the chain to remain around his neck. My Lord. And any time from that point, the elephant could have escaped to freedom. But mentally, he had accepted the fact that he would be a slave for life My Lord. and My never again tried to get away. Yeah. We, in many cases today, are like that elephant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We have accepted a sense of just existing. My Lord. As long as we can rent a movie to put in our VCR. Yeah. Right. Pay our mortgage on time. My Lord. And simply go through the motions of everyday life experiences. We tend not to expect the big things of God. My Lord. Now this is not an indictment to your salvation. For you do not have to be blessed above abundance by God to have salvation. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. But I don't know about you, but I'm saved today. <laughs> I, hear you, I still would like a few more potatoes. <laughs> Some would say that perhaps, preacher, you're getting greedy today. But God bless, promised to bless me in abundance. Good measure. Yeah. Press down and shake it together. Right. And me and give unto my bosom. Right. So I got my cup out today. <laughs> I'm expecting some love. Hey, Something that will empower me to understand how I am to deport myself right. in this life yeah. to get those blessings. Hey, right. Right. And so when we look at the totality of the negative images on television, my love. you can't point to a positive show that shows us without a comedy routine. I like a joke just as good as the next person. But you can't joke every day, all day. I like all musical expressions. But if you got to refer to women in derogatory terms just to get your sales up, I don't want to have any parts. She's got to reveal all of her body parts to attract a prospective mate. I'm not interested. If the self-esteem of a small child can look at a doll that resembles that child and call it ugly, I don't know about you, but something is wrong. And God is complete. And we who are the adults have to have an understanding that this inferiority complex is from Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That it is a plan from the pit of hell designed to keep us from getting our blessing. Oh. 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 So with a proper understanding of how God has blessed us as a people to endure what has to be called hell on earth, we know that we are propelled by faith. Yeah. We are propelled by faith. Hello. Just like the writer of Hebrew spoke about Abraham who went after a city whose builder and maker was God. Yes, sir. And just like how he was willing to sacrifice Isaac by faith. Oh, yeah. And he goes on to speak about how Moses gave up the riches that could have been his in Egypt yes, to suffer with the children of God. Oh, yeah. right. And yeah. so we understand that by faith God framed the world. And by faith in God, we can see a better day. Yeah, Our children must know what they're up against. Oh, yeah. Amen. It is time out for sending them out into a racist world. My 
know. As if people are going to welcome them in. Well, but you got to tell them that even when you finish school and get a job in some faraway city, you'll probably be the only one that looks like you own the job. But you also have to tell them that God will give you the strength to be able to endure that situation. And even though they try to hold you down and won't give you your just promotion, God will make them promotion. with your car on idle, 
and cry as if there's nothing that you can do. Because God will give you the power. So we have to understand that we got to run with patience this race that is set before us. Look into Jesus as an author and finisher of our faith. It means that he didn't write a portion of the story. It means that he wrote the whole story. It means that before the dawn of civilization, Christ knew us. And he had ordained us the good works. And he wrote the completed story. But the world will tell you that you can't make it out of grammar school. The world will tell you you can't make it out of elementary school. The world will tell you you can't graduate from high school. The world will tell you you never can go to college. Tell you never can go to graduate school. But don't listen to the world. But keep looking to Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. We despise and shame through the glory that it would be in fulfilling the will of the Father. Who went through the same kind of suffering. Yes, who went through the same kind of situation being despised and rejected of yes, men. Yes, the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, yes. So from our forefathers and foremothers we can learn. That those roads that we have been traveling have been stormy. Oh, and the chastening rod have been bitter. Oh, yeah. And it has been found in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat right. under our weary feet have taken us to the place where our father sat. I don't know about you today, young people. But when I found out that my great-grandmother had her eyes put out to teach the slaves to read, I started to pick up a book. When I found out that my people were sharecroppers and never could seem to break even, but they worked hard from sun up to sun down and didn't have much material wealth to show for it, I began to appreciate the little house that I live in now. When you have an understanding of where you have come from, you can be appreciative of something. You may be the one with one talent. Somebody else got five. But if you let God multiply, that little bit that you do have, you'll find yourself in a position someday and you'll look back and your soul will remember how you walked down dusty road. And looking at the shoe sole and the hat holes in it. And you wore the same pair of shoes Monday through Saturday. Polished them Saturday night and warm Sunday. Yeah. 
Because our forefathers and mothers were not the only one that bled. Yes, Lord. But Christ, yes, Lord. he bled. Yes, Lord. He suffered yes, Lord. He died. Yes, Lord. He died. Yes, Lord. But he got out. Scripture say that if any man oh, yeah. 
will be in Christ Jesus. He's a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. And they're reconciled to God. And what about all my old mess? Well, God got some special filters. <laughs> you push it through those filters and you know, wash out a little bit of it. Push it through another filter and wash out a little more. Hey, yeah, and push it through another filter and wash out a little more. Right. Finally, you say, I looked at my hands. <laughs> and it looked beautiful. Yeah. The conversation was good. Yeah. I didn't have the case for the same thing that I used oh, to have all the time. Yeah. Because now, I'm in love <laughs> under new management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. more. I'm not accepting anything less than what a servant of the Most High God expects. The best. I want the best of everything because I serve the true and living God. So if you're here today, why don't you come? While the blood is still running warm in your Oh, yes, Lord. You ought to come today. The Lord has spoken. And it's up to you to respond. For that way that you can and around. Jesus said, bring all of your burden to the Lord and leave them there. If you surrender today, you can do that whole man day with thee.
rest you for saying amen. If I tell the truth, say amen. If I say something that's not truthful, wave your finger at me. And I'll take it back. It is good to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been a whirlwind <clears throat> three weeks. Still getting over a little cold. But I feel stronger than I did. Sometimes God heals right away. Sometimes God heals over the course of time. But he'll give us the strength. Yes, sir. When we need it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That is a word. Yes, sir. From the Lord. Uh -huh. There is a word from the Lord. Yes, sir. We've already heard from President Clinton, <laughs> Congressmen and Senators. We've heard from the mayor's office. Uh -huh. But what about a word from the Lord? From the Lord. Uh -huh. The word is found in Book of 1st Timothy, the 4th chapter, verses 11, 12, and 16. 1st Timothy 4, 11, 12, and 16. Yes, Lord. These words are recorded. These things command and teach. Command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, mm -hmm. in spirit, in faith, in purity. Uh -huh. Moving down to 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Uh -huh. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt save both thyself and them that hear thee. Yeah. Yeah. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, That's and following right. of his word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take as a subject today, each one teach one. Each one teach one. The message today out of 1 Timothy comes to us as Paul instructs the young minister about how it is that he should instruct and teach. <clears throat> he gives the young minister sound doctrine that will prevent him from going in the wrong direction. You can have the best of intentions, mm -hmm. but without proper instruction, you will never be affected in reaching your goal. That's right. Yes, sir. So this older preacher took interest in the younger preacher. Hello. The younger preacher needed the counsel and the guidance. Uh -huh. He taught Timothy the do. And the don'ts. Uh -huh. yes, sir. This interaction between generations is a good template or example of what is required today to get and to keep our youth on the right track. Uh -huh. I you, Doc. The level of interaction between generations is at an all time low. Hello. Parents don't know how to relate to their children. All right. Children cannot relate to their parents. Hello, I hear you. So as a result, they each go into their own separate rooms and close the door. All right. 
They meet frequently over meals or in passing in hallways, but never take the time to really get to know each other and to understand the situation that each are dealing with. But there was a time that the relationship between generations was a bond that was two, three, and sometimes four generations thick. Deaconess Ross, who just lost her grandfather, 105 years old. She said since she was born, she can remember him. Spanned out over generations. The knowledge from one generation propelled the next generation to take a few steps forward. Oh, yes. Well, last week, we tried to show that there is a relationship between racism and sin. Uh-huh. And that history plays a big role in the self-esteem of the developing individual. Uh-huh. We tried to show that who controls the information also controls the development. Uh-huh. You can't get around self-esteem. Uh-huh. But today we wanted to focus on the fact that it is an absolute necessity for parents and adults to command and teach certain things to society and to our children. Yes, sir. All right. yes, sir. Society must be addressed from a position of strength. Uh-huh. Not weakness. I hear you, doctor. If you don't have any power, uh-huh. nobody's going to listen to you. Amen. <laughs> I hear you, doctor. Because they don't have to. Amen. I hear you. We on the job together, my rank and your rank the same. Why would you listen to me? All right, all right. But if I was your boss, all right. Sign in your check. All right. I bet you would get off the phone and listen to me. <laughs> so society must be addressed from a position of strength. But the problem is, we don't have any. Hello. We don't own anything. Come on. Come on. We consume everything. All right. And wonder why no one will listen to us. All right. no. Children must be addressed from a position of authority. Yes, sir. Yes. The parent is the authority figure. Adults in general are the authority figure. Yes, sir. Or they used to be in yesteryear. <laughs> but now you can't say anything to someone else's child. Yeah, yeah. All right. So there is a relationship between teaching and commanding, Uh but it takes power and it takes understanding of how to bridge the gap between these two. Uh Paul does not simply assume that Timothy will someday find out how to command and teach. But he demonstrates it for him and sets an example. We need to do the same today for our youth. They're crying out for an example. Now all people come into the world knowing essentially nothing other than the fact that they're hungry. A seemingly something miraculous happens in just a few years. By the time a child is seven or eight years old, they seemingly know everything. Well, I know. All right. I know. The transition from one stage of life to another is real. <coughs> if we take a brief look at history, there's much information to understand about the process of coming of age. Hello. With the Jews, there is a certain time that a child has reached adulthood. And they put together what is called a bar mitzvah. It is to tell the world that my son or my daughter is now an adult. And 
we have imparted upon them a level of maturity and they have a sense of responsibility that they are prepared now to accept the challenges of this world as an adult. And we are confident now that they are no longer children, but they are grown. In the African tradition, there's a process called the rites of passage. And once successfully completing the rites of passage, the individual is considered as an adult, not a child. On the other hand, to the person that does not complete the rites of passage, regardless of their age, they will be forever considered as a child and treated as such. Yes, sir. Somehow we must understand that children cannot simply stumble from one stage to another and wake up someday and be a man or a woman. For all big boys are not men. All large girls are not women. You may look like a man or a woman. But responsibility will tell the difference between the two. So in these developmental stages, we have to understand that they're highly affected by the environment. But as believers in Jesus Christ, we must understand that environment alone cannot dominate where that person will ultimately reach in life. There's a popular expression that says that you may have been born in the slum, but the slum was not born in you. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but it's the size of the fight that's in the dog. So we have to understand that we may have certain experiences that seemingly predispose us for certain kinds of behavior. I know. But once you are of a certain age, you can no longer use it as a crutch or an excuse. I tell you now. So our parents and adults must be proactive. I know. I tell you now. To try to prevent the rising tide of seemingly children out of control. All right. But a grown man almost has to say yes sir I know. to his young son. I hear ya. Something is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But a young lady says it's her mother and refuses to do the chore. Yes. And her mother can do nothing about it. I hear ya, doctor. Something wrong. Yeah. We have to understand that Paul was indicating to Timothy that these things have to be commanded and taught. Uh -huh. Let no man despise thy youth. I hear you. I hear you. You look at our youth today. Uh -huh. They are despised. Uh -huh. They are showered with negative information. Uh -huh. Everywhere they turn. Yeah. In many cases, they are taught down to yeah. at what is perceived to be their limited level of knowledge. Yeah. 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 Many have questioned their morals and their goals. And many have said that they are devoid of the traditions of old. Yeah. But the fruit does not fall far from the tree. Right. Whatever trait a child exhibits, they got it honest. Most likely it came from home. Or it resulted as a result of the fact that the home did not dominate the information that they were receiving on the outside. To the child, to the parent that refuses to talk about sensitive subjects, to that child, be rest assured that around the corner right. and across the block, somebody will tell them everything they want to know. From G to X, they will tell them everything that they want to know. 
Amen. And all of what they are not prepared to handle. Amen. Those who are in control of our avenues of information, they really control the subconscious mind. My Lord. And Paul gives a concrete and sound example of what should be done. I hear you, Doctor. Paul is very serious about this. Yes. When you give out a commandment, you intend for it to be followed. Yeah, yeah. And the military orders are not given just to make conversation. I hear you. I hear you, Doctor. But they're given to be followed. Yeah. He goes on to say, be thou an example of the believer uh -huh. in word. Conversation, charity, spirit, faith, purity. These five little words are rarely demonstrated to our youth today. For many times when we give them our word that we are going to do a certain thing, we let them down. But the gang, on the other hand, gives their word and follows. Many of our conversations use negative words to describe our own offspring. One negative word can ride a person for a lifetime if it comes from the right person. To the child that is trying to impress daddy, who never can get a word of encouragement, will have a lifetime of trying to please daddy. I hear you, doctor. Yes. But to the child that has come to know Jesus Christ know. and realize that they are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty God I hear you, doctor. can come to peace with the reality that they may never be able to please daddy on earth. I know. But daddy in heaven will still smile down upon them. I know. I hear you. We have to command and teach. Oh, glory. Charity. Charity. Turner this morning spoke about charity. I love Looking to give and not receive. I hear you, doctor. The quality time that is required to show someone that they are important. I hear you. Faith. Understanding the struggle that you have gone through when you were at the same age. All right. You realize that children, for the most part, believe that when they are experiencing something that no one else in the world has, I know. that they're the only one to put on a pair of pants, ever, <laughs> or to look for the right dress. <laughs> and we have to understand that their problems may seem petty to those whose problems are in a different arena. But to that child, it's very important. Yes. And to the person that they have confidence in to spend that quality time and work through a situation with them, they will earn that trust for a lifetime. Uh -huh. And I tell you, this is what games are doing. They recruit our children. Yes. And they demonstrate love to them. Uh -huh. I know games are negative. But to the individual who has not experienced that manner of compassion and love, they gravitate toward it. Oh, my mother has an expression that she uses saying that love just falls. You fall in love. But love just assumes fall on a flower as a piece of the moon. It just falls. <laughs> And once it falls down, that's what you're stuck with. So many times our youth have come to love negative things because they had nothing positive to hold on to. So these five little words, which I rather demonstrate, but we have to understand that in order for God to move and change the situation, I know. We have to do our part. Yes. Children will act out only the things which have been allowed to dominate.
there are. Yeah, no. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, yeah. Now, if all you ever hear are negative things about yourself, every time you turn on the television, all you see are negative images of yourself. Eventually, how will you feel about yourself? And when we speak about parents being proactive, we have to understand that it's not a matter of just giving our Bible verse. But those verses have to be broken down to the point that the child understands how they're empowered by God, I hear you. to survive in any situation. I hear you, Doc. We have to start a process of reprogramming the computer. I know. When a child sits in a classroom and the teacher indicates that they don't believe that they can handle this class. What if the child was able to say within their own heart that I am who God says that I am? I know. I hear you. I tell you, it would make a difference today. And so if we begin to give our children the tools that they need to deal with what they're really facing, there is a sense of power I know. Yes, sir. to the child whose world has been covered by all which is negative, I know. all which is damaging to their image and self-esteem. What if they could say like the psalmist said, the earth is the law. Yeah. And the fullness thereof, yeah. and they that dwell therein. Yeah, yeah. So if God made me, I know. why am I worried about what people are saying about me? I hear you, Doctor. See, verses like that will reprogram a computer. Uh -huh. Because when a computer has been programmed a certain way, it just executes file after file. I know. I hear you, Doctor. It will download a negative concept. I know. And present it on the screen. I know. The seeds that we plant result in the crops that we get. I hear you. But the soil that that seed is planted in I know. have to be fertilized oh, yes. by the parents. Yes. And the adults in society. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I planted some grass seeds in the yard. Wow. And I tried to fertilize them. <laughs> but I noticed that uh, after the temperature dropped just a few degrees, All right. and I cut the grass, the patches where I had put the seed down had been looking okay. <laughs> and <died. laughs> So I determined after close evaluation that the top saw and it rolled it away. Yeah. And I planted good seed, yeah. but the ground <laughs> didn't have the mineral well. so that it would germinate and the, and the root would grow. I know. It takes quality time and effort oh, right. yes. to show someone I know. the goodness of Jesus. I oh, hear you know. yeah. It takes quality time and effort to gain the trust of a young child. I got you now. So these words that Paul uttered are not just simple words. I hear you. But they have great meaning. Oh, yeah. Being honest is a must. Conversation are a must. I know. First Corinthians 15 and 33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communication. Corrupt good man. I know. Oh, glory. Evil communication corrupt good man. So that means don't we go to church Sunday after Sunday? I know. If we're going to get on the phone after church I know. and talk about folks mm -hmm. while children are sitting at the table eating. I know. Those evil communication come back to home. Do we have to be real with our children? Yes. Oh, they may just let us get away with things, but they have a mind that's recording okay. everything. Uh -huh. Charity, love. Taking that time out to love that child. Not buying them a new BC. 
shit off. I know. I have a yet. series of video games. I know. <laughs> but quality time meaning means hugging a child. Showing the love of Christ. Yes, Lord. It makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Only one such interaction like this can be the difference between a bright future yeah. and a dismal future. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Showing the devotion to God in the home as well as the church uh -huh. makes an impression. Yes, sir. Sometimes when we are playing our gospel records, my Lord. if the song moves upon the altar of my heart, my, Lord. my eyes have been known to walk my Lord. as I think about the goodness of Jesus. I hear you, Dr. And sometimes my daughter will come around and she will see me crying. My Lord, I did. And she will say, what's wrong, Dad? My Lord. And I will say, nothing is wrong, but God well, is good. My Lord. One little communication like that I did it, goes a tremendous difference. Oh, yeah. And if we look back and see how our forefathers praised God. Yeah. And who can remember Grandma down on her knees yeah. praying? First thing in the morning, yeah. last thing at night, yeah. who never closed her eyes until we got home. Right. It makes a difference yeah. when somebody sees an example. Yeah. Faith, we must understand that faith is not just some abstract term. I hear you now. But without it, the child must understand it's impossible yeah. to please God. I, hear you. I remember in the ninth grade, one teacher stopped me after class. I know. We had just given an oral report. And she said, Clark, you're reading on a fourth grade level. Well. And you're in the ninth grade. I know. She said, did you hear the young lady that gave the report just before you? She is reading as a freshman in college right now. I know. But yet, when you told your story, mm -hmm. you had the attention of the people, and she did it. I know. She said that your spirit was in what you were saying. I know. I hear you. And if you will but learn to burn at midnight oil, uh -huh. and have a little more faith. All right. There's no telling where you go. I hear you, Doc. Because you got a good head on your shoulder. All right. All right. Even though most of the time you don't act like it. <laughs> I, I asked her, what is the midnight hour? Right. <laughs> what do you mean burning the midnight hour? I hear you, Doc. She said, in days of old, by them nights, <laughs> kerosene lamps. Well, well. We studied our lesson. Yeah. Uh -huh. Perhaps it damaged our eyes, and that's why we're wearing glasses, but we studied okay. as long as it took to learn it. I know. She said, Clark, I don't care if it takes you a week to understand and read what it took somebody else five minutes. Once you have it in your head, yeah. I know. nobody right. can take it out of you. I look back in the 12 years of school. I know. That one conversation that only lasted about two minutes. I know. I hear you. Had a bigger impact on me than any other single event that happened in school. I hear you, Doctor. For I remember that Miss Wilder said that I could do something All right. if I put my mind to it. I hear you, Doctor. At that time, I did not put my mind to it. All right. I still continued to coast. But over the years, I reflected back. All right. And when I decided to study it for the first time, my right. right. words came back to me. I, hear you. I tell you, it makes a difference yes. to put in some quality time with a child. Yeah. I can remember as a young man, Going over to my grandmother's house. I know. And she had this little emblem 
that looked like a small seed of some kind my inside Lord, of her. And I asked her, Grandmama, what is this? Mm. And she said, this is a mustard seed. All right. All right. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, my you Lord. can move mountains. Oh, and I said, whole mountains? <laughs> she said, yes, you can move them by the help of the Lord. Singing. And some people came from all around just to look at this little 
the Lord. He didn't start out right with any advantage. But he believed in his father that was up above. And I want you to know that if you never receive the correct teaching, if you never gain an understanding of what all screws your mind up from time to time, and nobody else has time to pause in this busy journey of life to show you a little test. The same color when he was of age. Traveling through the countryside. Healing the sick. Raising the dead. Casting out demons by God the Father. Even in the midst of all the activities and all the crowd that was around him. I understand that Luke in the 18th chapter in the 16th verse said that little children wanted just to get around him and the disciples were trying to run him away. But he said, suffer your little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God. A little child don't understand how to say no. A little child trusts without expectation. A little child looks for hope Anywhere the hope comes out. But Jesus went on to say that except you be as a little child, you cannot inherit that kingdom. That wonder and amazement. Many, when we were young, we had dreams, we had goals, we had aspirations. But little bit by little bit, society convinced us that we couldn't be that doctor All right. that we used to make pretend we were when we were children. We couldn't be the teacher that we used to make pretend. We couldn't be the lawyer like we saw on Perry Mason. Somehow they convinced us that the possibilities were not for us, but they were for other people. But I want you to know today that when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, Ask Daniel when he was stepping in the last thing. You asked the Hebrew children when they were standing there at the forest first. And the king said, will your God deliver you? He said, well, that he will. I don't know. But one thing I do know, he's able. He's able to deliver us. God is able to do anything.